y'all today. Um, something that uh, I felt like God had put on my heart, and uh, it's going to be like a little bit of teaching, a little bit of preaching. Is that okay with everybody? Amen. Um, you know, I feel like every time you come to church, you should always leave with a little bit more knowledge, you know, uh, knowledge of the Lord. Amen. And I feel like you should always learn a little bit is what I'm trying to say whenever you leave church. And um, uh, again, you know, uh, so good to see everybody. And uh, I just hope you're really blessed by this message. Amen. And uh, it, it tickles me every week to see you guys here. Amen. I know there's not a lot of people here today. Okay, but that's not a problem. Amen. God's not interested in numbers. That's right. Yes, Amen. Amen. He had only 12 people when he changed the world. That's know? right. Amen. Yes. Come on now. And uh, like we always say, we always quote that scripture, that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. Amen. So God is here. Amen. God is in the midst. And God is always just saying, are you willing to let me in? Amen. Amen. Uh, there's one scripture, Melissa, that says that he stands at the door and he knocks. Yes. And he says, whosoever will, let me in. Amen. So God is knocking. So who's going to let him in today? Amen. So I always pray and I say, God, you know, you're welcome in this service. You know, uh, come and have your way in this service. Come and be in this service, whatever you want to do. Lord, this is not, you know, this really isn't our church. It's, it's your church. You know, you move in this service and you have your way in this service. Amen. So, hey, what are you needing today? What are you looking for today? What is, what's, what's on your mind today? What's on your heart today? What's troubling you? What's bothering you? Amen. God sees it, like I said. God wants to meet those needs for you today. God wants to bless you today. Amen, somebody. Amen. God wants to bless you. And uh, I, feel like, I feel like what I'm going to share today is, is, is something that can really, really kind of help open your eyes in the way, with the way that you view God. Or in the, in the way that you be yourself sometimes. You know, I think so many of us today in the church, you know, we go around and we, um, and we have kind of a negative opinion about ourselves. And sometimes we have a negative opinion, Pastor Larry, about, about God. You know, we think that um, we walk around with this, this down countenance, you know, thinking that, oh, we've made too many mistakes. We can't come to God. Or we've, we've failed too many times. Look at what I've done. I can't come to the Lord. He's not going to bless this mess, so to speak. And uh, we feel that way sometimes. Amen. I'm, I, can be, I can stand up here and raise my hand and say, I've felt that way sometimes. And then there's some people that have kind of a, a real, a, kind of a little bit of a negative, uh, a negative out, outlook on God as well. Amen. They think that God is ready to, to strike them down whenever they do make that mistake. Amen. Or they think that God is going to turn his back. Cut, you know, cut you off completely whenever you, uh, whenever you fail. Or, you know, just, we have all these different concept, uh, con misconceptions about God, is what I'm trying to say, and about ourselves. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why we, you know, we started this church, is we want people to know your true identity in Christ. You know, Stanley, who you really are in Christ. Who, who is, is really God? Does God really say that? Does God really do that? Well, let's look in his word and let's figure it out. Amen. That's why we always say, I love teaching. Amen. I love, I love to hear Bible study and, and to learn new things. Not so that I can get my, my head big, amen, with knowledge, because that's not where it comes from. But honestly, uh, there was one point in my life where I was, I was feeling like I, I got all, just, if y'all can understand what I'm saying, just kind of, just follow me. There was one point in my life where I was like, okay, I'm, uh, I'm already encouraged now. I don't need to hear any more encouragement. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like yes, every service was like, get on fire for God. Let's get on fire for God. Let's let's uh, let's run the, the the streets and let's 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 do this and let's do that. And yeah, we're all pumped up. But then I, I uh, there came a point where I just got kind of tired of hearing those kind of sermons. Mm, that's you know, good, kind of man. tired of hearing those kind of messages. And I knew that there was something more. Amen. I knew that there had to have been more than just Sunday after Sunday. How many of y'all have ever lived paycheck to paycheck in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you enter survival mode on Friday, right? When Friday comes around and you don't have any more money or, or Monday or whatever, after paying all your bills, you go into bread and bologna mode, right? <laughs> Raymond Noodle mode, amen? That's me. <laughs> but I think a lot of times we do that in the church world as well. Yeah. You know, we live, in a sense, Mary, we live Sunday to Sunday. Yes. You know, I'm going to go the whole week without encouragement, 
And then, oh, if I can just make it to church on Sunday, whenever those doors are open, I'll come and I'll get my encouragement. When the Bible says that David encouraged himself yes. in the Lord. And that's my question. How many of us are encouraging ourselves in the Lord on a daily basis? Not a Sunday thing. It's good to come to church on Sunday, right? It's, it's important. I believe it's important to come to church on Sunday. You know, fellowship with people. Get, you know, get in tune and see what God is saying. But are you fellowshipping with the Lord in your own prayer closet, Alma? Are you, are, you, are you seeking the Lord on your own time as well? Amen. That's all I'm trying to say. But I want y'all to, I want y'all to see, I, I want y'all to leave here seeing God in a little bit different light. Amen. You, you go, uh, the Bible says glory to glory, right? You learn a little bit more, and that's what I'm expecting for y'all today. That's what I want for y'all today. Amen. So, what I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about is Jesus Christ, your high priest. Your high priest. How many of y'all know what the role of the high priest was in the Old Testament? You know, it's it, if, if we don't understand that, Pastor Larry, and not just, but what it means for Jesus to be your high priest today. You know, what does that mean, Mary? What does that mean that Jesus Christ is our high priest today? What, is, what does that mean for us? So, you're not going to find any better place to study that than in Hebrews. So go to Hebrews chapter 5. And um, today we're not going to have any scriptures on the, on, the, uh, on the screen here. So if you have your Bible, today you get to dust it off and use it. Amen. Or you can look on with your, uh, your neighbor. Amen. But uh, we don't have anybody to, to man the computer today. Amen. So we're going to do this old style. Amen. Old school. All right, that's good. Hebrews chapter 5, amen. It's good to do it this way sometimes. You get to learn wherever you're, you get to learn where your books are at and where your chapters are at. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, and just look at verse 1. We're, we're going to do a little bit of reading. Uh, we're kind of just going to go through Hebrews a little bit. You know, we'll probably go to the next chapter and then the next chapter. But we're going to read a little bit and just, I'm going to show you all what I'm saying, Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. It says, is everybody there? It says, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and, and, going, and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. So at the beginning of this chapter, he starts by kind of just describing the high priest. You know, he's saying that they're taken from among men, they're appointed for the things pertaining to God, and to offer gifts and to op offer sacrifices for sins. Amen. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory right there. And then he says he can have compassion on people because he himself is just a man. Amen. The high priest was just a man. And he, have y'all seen, ever seen pictures of the high priest with the... Uh, the breastplate and the jewels right here and he's he was the high priest was the person that offered sacrifices for sins in the old testament and we'll learn more about this as we'll go but verse 3 says because of this he's required as as for the people so also for himself to offer sacrifice for sins so let me just let me slow down a little bit so in the old testament you could not come to god by yourself so to speak. Uh, if you're familiar a little bit with your Old Testament history, the Bible says, Gloria, that Jacob had 12 sons. And Judah was one of them. Uh, and there were others. And then one of them was Levi. Levi was basically the father of the priesthood. That's why sometimes in the Old Testament you see him called the Levites. The Levites. And so God... Had, or he had ordained it this way where when they were in the wilderness and whenever they began the law that the Levites were going to be their own there were 12 tribes and they were going to be the tribe Mary that was in charge of taking care of the tabernacle taking care of the, uh, the religious things of God all the other tribes had their own thing but the Levites they, could, they couldn't have any land they couldn't own really that much stuff because they were God's people and the Levites were the people that worked in the temple. Like, they were the priests, basically. But out of that group, there was one high priest. 
the high priest was the main one, Pastor Larry, out of all of them. The high priest was the one that offered once a year the uh, the atonement sacrifice. Right. The atonement sacrifice for to the yearly sacrifice to cleanse the people of their sins. But the people in the Old Testament, y'all know, they would bring sacrifices to the priest. They would bring bulls. They would bring uh, rams. You know, birds and sacrifice these for their sins. And, you know, they would inspect them. You know, they would look them over to see if, there, if there's any blemish or anything like that. Because if there was any kind of blemishes or anything, they couldn't accept that sacrifice to the Lord. So they had a, the, that's what the high priest was, was in charge of. And he was, he was basically the head honcho. Amen. He was the only person that can go into the Holy of Holies. Now, if you know uh, the tabernacle, there was the outer court. And then you'd walk inside and there was the, the area where the priests would do their work. And then there was this one room that had the Ark of the Covenant in it, where God was. And it was called the Holy of Holies. Nobody could enter that room. Nobody could go inside that room except the high priest once a year to offer a sacrifice for the sins of the people. And so he was an important person, is what I'm trying to say. And so, just to give you a little background there, and then look at verse 4. No man takes this honor to himself. But he who is called by God, just as Aaron was, so also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son today, I have begotten you. As, as he also says in another place, You're a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So what he's saying here is that the high priest was not chosen just by men. The high priest was called by God. Mm -hmm. He was called by God to be in the office of the high priest. And did you know that the high priest could not have any defects himself? If you were born blind, you could not be a high priest. That's right. If you were born deaf, you could not be a high priest. You know, first, he had to have been in the tribe of Levi to begin with. But if you were born with any kind of deformment, you couldn't, you couldn't be a high priest. You weren't qualified. You had to be almost perfect, in a sense, on the outside. You couldn't have any kind of, uh, the scripture says you couldn't be dwarfed. You couldn't be, you know, a little person. There was different, there was all these different kind of uh, stipulations you had to meet before you could become a high priest. And the high priest's job, are y'all following me? The high priest's job was to represent the people to God. Amen? So, Let's say this, like, this is the, uh, let's say God is like right here or something. Let's just say that the, this is the Ark of the Covenant. This is the Holy of Holies. And let's say I'm the high priest and y'all are, are the children of Israel, okay? Y'all cannot just walk up here and start talking to the Lord and give your own sacrifices. I'm the high priest. So I stand in between you and God. And I represent you to God. Listen carefully what I'm saying. I don't necessarily represent God to you, but I represent you to the Lord. And I speak to the Lord and I offer the sacrifices on all of y'all's behalf. So what that means is, if I have sin and God is not pleased with me, then God is not pleased with you, no matter how hard you try. That was the role of the high priest. You just have to read the Old Testament and read exodus and stuff like that and you, you get what i'm trying to say more i'm just trying to give you an over general overview of it so i represent you to god and so if the high priest is not accepted before god then you're not accepted before god then the people were not accepted so jesus now is our high priest y'all know that hebrew says that that jesus is our high priest and that he stands he stands in between us and god so to speak to represent us to the Lord so that we can come boldly to God now because he's cleansed us now. Amen. So now we have a greater high priest now. Y'all know in the Old Testament, all of those were types and shadows. And then when Jesus stepped on the scene, now he was the fulfillment. He was the fulfillment of all those things. Are y'all y'all following me Amen. so far? Amen. So, like I said, I was going to be reading a little bit in Hebrews. And uh, so now... I just want y'all to kind of keep like a bookmark or something there, but, but jump over to chapter 7. 
just look at chapter 7 now. And uh, so we've learned, you know, that the high priest was basically there for the benefit of the people. So he, he was there to, to offer the sacrifices for the people. And without the high priest in the Old Testament, there would basically be no connection between the people and God. Okay? And you're going to see how that relates to Jesus Christ and how he is now our high priest. Amen? And look at, uh, just look at verse one. Uh, look at verse one. I'm just going to kind of read a little bit in chapter 7. And I encourage you all just to follow along. It says, For this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, the priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning the king of peace. So, in the Old Testament, y'all know the story of Melchizedek? Melchizedek, the story where, well, we're, we're, we're fixing a flip there, I'll read a little bit. But Melchizedek was the, uh, the high priest during Abraham's time. And Abraham got through coming back from a war and he approached the uh, he approached uh, Melchizedek the Bible says his name is the king of righteousness and the Bible says that Melchizedek blessed Abraham and then it goes on it's going to go on to say that Melchizedek blessed him with bread and wine he, ba he basically Melchizedek blessed him he, ble he blessed he blessed Abraham and then Abraham in return gave him uh, a tenth of his spoils of war and you know a lot of us like to, uh, well, not, not a lot of us, but a lot of people use this chapter, Pastor Larry, to preach, uh, you know, tithing, tithing, so to speak. And y'all know here, we actually don't preach, we actually don't teach tithing at this church. We don't preach tithing in this church. In other words, we don't believe that you have to give a tenth in order to be, uh, you know, in order to have your finances blessed or in order to be blessed. Do y'all understand? So the, the New Testament teaches being a cheerful giver being a person that, that loves to give, you know, to God. And that's that's pretty apparent in this scripture if you keep reading because you see that, you see that, um, well, well, we'll actually flip there a little more, but you see that Melchizedek first blessed Abraham, Mary, and he first gave him bread and wine and blessed him and gave him a blessing. And then Abraham gave him a tenth yes. of what he had. Very important right there because... That's not what we teach in the church today when it comes to tithing. We teach that you give your tenth, and then God blesses you. Then God gives you what, you know, you're, you're, he puts a, a blessing on your finances, or he, he, uh, if he don't, he, what, is, what do we say? He curses your finances, or he might curse your finances. But this scripture teaches that um, Melchizedek first blessed Abraham, and then Abraham gave. You see... The Bible teaches, guys, that it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Amen. The goodness of the Lord. Amen. Did you come to church because you wanted to be condemned and judged or because you felt judged and condemned? No, you came to church because God's been good to you, right? Amen. God's Amen. blessed you. And you're sitting here because God has blessed you and God has kept you. Amen? Amen? It's all because of the Lord that we're sitting here. Like that country song, but by the grace of God. Amen? <laughs> but... So, uh, we can continue reading, but uh, the, uh, actually, yeah, go ahead and flip to it. So, keep a bookmark there, and let me just kind of show y'all what I'm talking about. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. That's the first, the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 14. Look at verse, uh, we'll start at verse 14. I'll give you a couple seconds to get there. Genesis chapter 14, look at uh, 14, verse 14. It says, Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house, and he went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night. Uh, he divided his forces against them by night. I was trying to get to the... Uh, I think I, I started a little early. Just look at, actually, go to verse 18. Sorry about that. Look at verse 18. I started a little early. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. 
he was the priest of God most high, and he blessed him, and he said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And then it's and Abraham, he gave him a tithe of all. So the reason why I was pointing that out to y'all is just to show y'all the story right there. See that Melchizedek first blessed him. He brought out bread and wine, and he blessed him, and then Abraham gave. You see, there's a difference. I want y'all to picture the, you know, the difference between the, uh, the Levite priesthood and Jesus' priesthood. So the Levites, would they would receive tithes, and they would take from the people of Israel. And then in return, the people would be blessed. Y'all see what I'm saying? But then, when Jesus steps on the scene, Pastor Larry, Jesus blesses first. God loves us first. And then we, in return, are saying, God, use me for whatever you want. Amen. Amen. God, I'll, I'll, I'll give to your kingdom if I want. So that's why I, I brought that scripture out to y'all. But I want to tell this. Um, the purpose is I want y'all to see the difference between the, uh, the Levite priesthood and Jesus' priesthood, because now we're under the great high priest who is Jesus Christ. Jesus is our high priest now. Amen? So now, um, you see that Melchizedek was, the Bible says that he was a person that didn't have uh, a mother or father. Y'all seen that? Uh, I don't know if y'all seen that scripture before. Melchizedek, it says that he didn't have any record. Nobody knew who his father or his mother was. Because he, he just didn't have a record. Now, the Jewish people would keep records, and uh, they didn't have one for Melchizedek. Right. And so that's why they say there was no, he didn't have no mother or father because nobody knew who he was. But what Hebrews is trying to do, so just go back to Hebrews really fast. Hebrews chapter 7, uh, just go back to where you were. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7. Uh, what, what Hebrews chapters, uh, chapter 7 and Chapter 5, the scripture we just read, is trying to do, is trying to show you that Christ is now our new high priest. And that Christ sits on the throne now, and he's our great high priest who represents us to God now. Y'all know that when God looks at you, God really doesn't see you. That's right. Amen. He sees Jesus. Yes. Amen. And he sees you washed by his blood. Amen. 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 When God looks at you, and uh, let's, let's say, for instance, that... Um, you know, you, you sin. You make mistakes, which is, which is what we all do, right? We all make mistakes occasionally. We all sin occasionally. Amen. When God looks at you, he doesn't see really the mistake that you've made. He sees you washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And because of what Jesus has done for us, mm -hmm. then now we can come boldly to the throne of God. Do y'all see the, the, the importance of what Jesus did for you on the cross? Again, in the Old Testament, you could not come to God and do it yourself. You had to go through the high priest. And that's exactly kind of what we're still doing now. We're going through the high priest, which is now Jesus Christ. Amen. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's some people that still believe, Mary, that we need priests. Priests out there in the world, Pastor Larry. But Jesus is our great high priest. And the Bible also says, in other places... That you are priests. Yes. Like now, so now we're all royal priesthood unto God now. And Jesus is the great high priest that we go to whenever we want to, whenever we want, uh, to speak to God or anything like that. So basically because of what Jesus did, we can come boldly to his throne. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? So now, uh, so chapter 7, uh, if y'all want to, like in y'all's own time, just kind of read uh, chapter 7. I love the book of Hebrews. And it kind of just talks about this... Uh, it kind of talks about the office of Melchizedek and how Jesus is basically, a, like in verse 17, it says, you're a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus was basically like a type. He was a type of Melchizedek. And what, is, uh, what does Melchizedek's name mean? It means the, uh, the king of righteousness, the king of peace, which is what Jesus Christ is. Jesus is righteous, amen? He's not... Uh, Jesus didn't have any sin in him. He wasn't. He didn't have any kind of blemish on him. He was a perfect lamb, and so now he is like he is basically like Melchizedek. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of peace. 
Amen. And then, um, so now we're just kind of reading a little bit through, through Hebrews. Uh, so look at, so just jump to chapter 8 now. I like to read it kind of together because it just kind of flows together. And it says, uh, now uh, in, in verse 1, look at verse 1. It says, now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. I like what he says right there. This is the main point of what I'm trying to say. He says, we have a high priest who sits at the right hand of God. In verse 2, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. So when he says this one, who is he talking about right there? Jesus Christ, our new high priest, right? And he's basically saying that this high priest has, just like the high priest in the Old Testament had to sacrifice something, this high priest, which is who Jesus Christ has to sacrifice something as well. So let me ask you, what did Jesus Christ sacrifice? His body. He sacrificed himself right on the cross for us. The Bible says that the blood of bulls and goats can never save us. The sacrifices that they gave year after year, uh, day after day, you know, for the, for the sin offerings and the, the peace offerings and all those things in the Old Testament can never save them. But Jesus Christ, one sacrifice on the cross for us could save us. By his blood, it saved us. Amen. It made us whole. That's what, that's what Hebrews is trying to say. In verse 4, it says, For if he was on the earth, he would not even be a priest, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and the shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Y'all, the Old Testament was just, like I said, types and shadows of what this New Testament is now that we're under. Did you know that the Bible says that angels look at us and they're jealous of what we have? Yeah. Because we're filled with God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, angels are created beings. Yes. They're just, they're messengers from God. But we are people that are filled with God's Holy Spirit. That we're one with God. Yes. Amen. We have God living on the inside of us. Therefore, the angels look at us and they say, man, I wish we could have what y'all have. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in the Old Testament, Pastor Larry, that, they, that um, Abraham and all these forefathers that you read about in Sunday school and stuff, they looked ahead and they saw the good things that God was going to do for us when Jesus would die on the cross. Jesus died on the cross and gave us the Holy Spirit, moved within us, saved us, cleansed us from our sin, amen, and they looked ahead and they wanted that as well. And church, now we have that. And that's something that's something to shout about. You know, that's something to get excited about, that amen. we have God living on the inside of us. And the Bible says that he's a mediator of a better covenant. You know, in your Bible, you have an old covenant and you have a new covenant. Well, now we're living under the what? The new, new covenant. covenant. New covenant. And the Bible calls that, Pastor Larry, a better covenant. Mm -hmm. A better covenant than what they had in the old. Because the old could never save them. Could never, ever save them. But now this new covenant, now we are saved, church. Amen. We are born again. Amen. We're yes. blessed by God. And it's different than the old covenant. This great, uh, this great high priesthood is different than that old priesthood. Mm -hmm. The old priesthood you had to give in order to be blessed. You had to give, and you had to sacrifice, and you had to, you know, to, to constantly do those things. But in this New Testament, the Bible says, God says that I will be your, your sin offering. I will come and do these things for you. So now it's God doing it for you, and you just having to open your arms and just receive it. Just receive it. Amen. Is that hard for y'all to receive? Because for some people, it is hard to receive, because people feel like Dustin, like, we got to work for it. You got to work for that peace. You got to work for that salvation. 
You, you know, there's something, give me something to do, Pastor. Give me something to do so that I can feel like I'm, like I'm worthy of God's presence, like I'm worthy of God's spirit. Some people feel that way. But that's not the way this new covenant is, Pastor Larry. This new covenant is God doing it for you and you just receiving it, church. That's what the, that's what the, uh, the ministry of the high priest is all about. And uh, in that scripture, he says, you know, that uh, Christ is he's a mediator between us, uh, a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. And I've always I've always liked the way that scripture says that, Mary, that it's a better covenant. You know, it's it's established with better promises, meaning we have it better than they had at church. Amen. And if you're in Christ, you have it better than, than the people out there. I mean, even if you don't see it, you have it better than those people. Uh Amen. That's actually, uh, it's, a, it's a type of theology. It's like a, a better covenant theology. Amen. We're, we're established with these better promises. And then Christ is the mediator. And uh, so just keep your, keep your hand there and flip over to, uh, to 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 2. Now I'll, I'll read that scripture to you all. Look at, look at uh, church, look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, verse verse five. Amen. Amen. Everybody, uh, is it everybody there? I'll give you a little more time. Amen. Very popular scripture. Amen. I probably could have just quoted it. <laughs> Y'all want to know what it says? First Timothy chapter two, verse five. It says, "It says, for there is one God." And there's one mediator between God and men. How many of y'all believe there's one God? Amen. One God, and there's one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. So how many how many mediators are there? One. There's one mediator. And who is that? That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So question. Does that do we need people to stand in for us to come to God? No. Because Jesus Christ is the mediator, right? No. No, so now he is the one mediator that stands in between us and God. Remember, yeah. he stands in between us and God, and he says, God, look at the sacrifice that I gave. Look at the sacrifice that I gave. Therefore, because of my perfect sacrifice, my one sacrifice on the cross, you have to accept all these people now because of what I've done for them. And they receive it, then they're covered in my blood, and they've, they've accepted that sacrifice. Amen? So God looks at who? Who does he look at? Does he look at y'all or does he look at the high priest? He looks at the high priest. He looks at the high priest, Jesus Christ, and he says, my people are accepted based on the sacrifice that Jesus has done. Amen. Amen. And so he's the mediator. Mediator means that that's just exactly kind of what it says. Somebody that just stands in between you and God. Stands in between their uh, almost like in a almost, uh, when I think about it, Larry, I think of like a, uh, like a court. Somebody that stands to represent you. Amen. Represents you and represents your case. And that's what Jesus does between us. So church, let me ask you, if you're feeling, you know, if, if you're going through something right now that makes you feel like unworthy, you know, unworthy to receive God, unworthy to receive his, his promises and his blessings, you should not feel that way because Jesus, Jesus is perfect, right? Amen. His, his perfect Amen. righteousness stands in between you and God. So how can it get any better than that perfect righteousness standing in between you and God? Amen. You see, the reason why I'm preaching this is because I want you all to see that it's not based on what you do for God to become pleasing before him. Which is what we say every week, right? It's not based on what you do. It's based on what Jesus did because he's the great high priest and he's a perfect sacrifice for you. You know, uh, as I've said, they could not bring... Uh, lambs that had blemishes, that had defects on them. They had to be perfect sacrifices. Jesus was perfect. Amen. He's a typology of, a, of our perfect sacrifice that was given, and he's also the type of high priest. You see, this high priest did not bring, a, he did not bring a ram or a goat or, or a little animal to be sacrificed for us. He offered himself, Amen. sacrificed himself, put his body on the cross for us. And that's why it's so beautiful. Amen. So, if the high priest is our representation, I want to ask you all a very important question today. Who is representing you today? 
who is representing you? Are you allowing Christ to be your representation? Or, you know, are you allowing uh, somebody else, you know, to represent you before God? Who represents you? Are you allowing your, your job to represent you, to be your representation before God? Are you allowing, you know, your spouse, are you allowing your friends to be your representation? Who's standing in between you and God? Are you, coming to, are you coming to God? Let me say it like this. Are you coming to the Lord yourself and saying, look at all these wonderful works that I've been doing. Look at, look at, look at uh, all the prayer that I've been doing, Gloria. Look at all the, the fasting and the Bible reading that I've been doing. God, look, and you're, you're bringing these sacrifices to the Lord and you're laying them down at his feet and saying, God, accept me based on what I've done for you. Yeah. Is that not what we're saying when we do that? So, if that's you, what you need to do is scoop those sacrifices to the side, amen? Because God only sees the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So what you need to be doing is you need to be coming to the Lord and saying, God, don't look at what I've done because I make mistakes, because I sin. And, uh, you know, I can wake up tomorrow and be in a bad mood and then the next day wake up and be in a good mood, amen? And some, you know, you're... We're all over the place sometimes with our emotions and with the, the way we do things, and we're not always on par, amen? amen. But, if, and if you come to God like that, Pastor Larry, and you say, God, you know, look at me, look at what I've done, well then, you know, you, you see those imperfections. But, if you, sh- if you bring, if you remind God and say, God, look at what Jesus has done for me. Look at the sacrifice that he has given then God has really no choice but to say, that's a perfect sacrifice right there. I'll accept Amen. that sacrifice because it's perfect. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. My beloved son, this my, you know, the sacrifice given to take away the sins of the world. That's the mindset that you need to be coming. Uh, that's the mindset that you need to be coming to God with is that Christ has done it all for you, church. Amen. Christ has done it all for you, church. It's like I said, it's not about what you can bring before the Lord. I've been there before. I've been there before, and I know what it's like. I know what it's like to feel like you're never doing enough. And uh, how many of you have felt that way before? Amen. You know, like Amen. you feel like, you, like you're doing all you can, and it's still not enough. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so you don't know where to turn. You don't know where to look. You don't know where to go. What am I going to do? You know, do I need to put more hours in at work? Do I need to give more time to this person, or do I need to do this? Stop thinking that way and start thinking, what is enough? Jesus Christ is yeah. enough for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to, the Bible says that God likes it, Gloria, for us to remind him of his promises. Yes. So God has promised you beautiful and great and, uh, and wonderful things. Amen. And God says, try me. Remind me of those things. Remind me that I promised you great things. Because it, it just, it pleases God when we do that. Amen. When we, when we lay the sacrifice at his feet. Amen. So, uh, so, okay, so go, go back to Hebrews, and uh, I'll read the last part of Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. I like to, uh, whenever I, I you know, try to understand something or, or read something, I like to read the whole thing because I like to get the whole picture of what the book, of what the chapters and stuff is trying to say. That's why I'm, that's why I'm doing, like, Hebrews 5, 7, 8, and 9, because that's all he's talking about is, is the great high priest, amen, which is now Jesus Christ. And look at nine, chapter 9, look at verse 11. It says, But Christ came as high priest of the, of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of, of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption amen that's the the bottom line the bottom line of what i'm trying to say right there like i said in the old testament they had a tabernacle where they would um where they camped you know they set it up you know to to be the, the the house of god but in this new testament we have what this scripture says a heavenly tabernacle that's Jesus Christ. Everything points to Jesus Christ. Amen. 
That's why when I say, church, all you need is Jesus Christ, I truly mean that because Amen. Christ Amen. points to everything. Amen. All you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Amen. so who is representing you? Who's representing you? Who is it that you know, you're know you giving a lot of your focus and a lot of your attention to and a lot of... Uh, you know, a lot of your worth to, you know. Uh, so, so many times we like to put in, like, we, we like to feel value based on, um, like, where we work or something like that. You know, like, what kind of job do you got? You know, this is where you get your value from. Or, uh, Mary, I've even heard it said, how much money do you have? You know, money is what is what makes you worth, is what gives you your worth, you know, that represents you. And in this world, it may be like that, amen? To the secular world, it may be like that. But to you, church, your representation and your worth can only be found in Jesus Christ. It can only be got through him. Because that's in this world, that's the only guarantee. Amen. That's the only that's the only perfect thing that we can put our eyes on and we can put our minds on. Amen, church. This is it. Uh, I hope everybody understands, you know, that you know, what I'm what I'm talking about, you know, just the high priest. And I want y'all to, to really start picturing Jesus, you know, as your, your high priest. See him as your high priest, the person that stands in between you and the Lord. Amen. amen. That, that gave amen. that perfect sacrifice for you. Amen, church. So let's all stand. Amen. Amen. I'm just really happy.